Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Tech Tuesday. My name is Vanessa, and today we are going to be talking about pivot tables in Microsoft Excel with Drew Wright, who's one of our librarians at the Samuel J. Wood Library. Before we begin, I just wanted to let everyone know we are expecting quite a few people to join today. So I do have all of your microphones off to prevent some background noise, but if you have any questions at any time, during the, the session, please just post your questions in the chat or you can raise your hand and I can bring you off the mic if you'd rather ask your question out loud. I am also recording today's session. So if for any reason you wanna go over this material again or share it with some colleagues that were unable to attend today, I'll be sending you an email at the end of the day with a link to this session recording as well as any other helpful links um, that we talk about today during the session. So without further ado, I am gonna hand it over to Drew. Thanks for being here today. Cool, thanks uh, Vanessa. So uh, my name is Drew. Um, and I'm one of the uh, librarians here at Weil. I'm the scholarly communications librarian, which is I, I handle a lot with, I work a lot with uh, the publication side of the, the house. Um, and today we're gonna be doing a little demo on, you know, for me, what is probably the, the best bang for your buck feature that Excel offers. Um, and that is pivot tables, um, which allows you to sort of quickly summarize, chop up um, large sets of data, um, create kind of interactive tables, interactive charts, which are not really going to get into the chart aspect of it. Um, but that's sort of a, another thing you can do. Um, and the best thing about all of this is that it allows you to do all of these sort of, you know, somewhat complicated things without actually touching the data itself. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do here is, um, cool, so we can repost the uh, links from the chats, and I'll do that. Do, 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 do. I got it, Drew. I'm posting oh, them Okay, now. cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we have um, two files that I'm going to be working on. One, the one that I'm going to be using um, is very large. It's it's uh, a Spark file, uh, public data for inpatient discharges uh, across Manhattan for 2021 or 2022. Um, so very large file. And that's what I'm going to be working on, just to kind of show you the, the volume that pivot tables can kind of easily work with. Um, the downside of that is that it's kind of a large file and depending on your, your system, you may have trouble opening it. Um, so I have a smaller version of the same file uh, that has you know just a, a fraction of um, the records there uh, available to download as well. If that's something that you're interested in, and you, you wanna follow along and you're having some issue uh, working with the, the larger file. All right, so I'm gonna get right in. Um, and if anyone has any kind of questions or, you know, needs me to sort of, uh, you know, walk backward and uh, kind of go over something else again, please don't hesitate to, to put something in the chat because uh, I don't want to kind of, you know, leave anyone uh, behind or in the dust so we can all sort of follow along, um, you know, together. Okay, so um, the file I mentioned before that we're going to be working off of is um, a Spark data file, public uh, health data from health.ny.gov. Um, I really like using this data set to sort of uh, demo uh, pivot tables because it's a very nicely organized uh, data set. It doesn't require a lot of cleanup. Um, it's also got a really a lot of really great information uh, in it, uh, so much so that a lot of people are sometimes surprised that this is a publicly available data set, uh, but it, it, it is completely de-identified and um, all of that fun stuff. Um, it's just a nice, nice piece of data to work with. So um, before we even sort of get started in building our pivot tables and really diving into to all that it can do, there's a couple of things that we have to make sure that our data, you know, does before we can even start to do that. Um, so there's really three things that we have to be aware of before we start uh, building pivot tables. Um, the first thing is that the data in our spreadsheet has to be continuous. And for that, um, uh, so what that means in this context is that there's no empty columns and that there's no empty rows. Um, so a lot of times what you'll have, what will happen is if you download a file from, you know, something like Qualtrics or RedCap even, or, um, you know, you get an export out of a health record, occasionally there'll be kind of weird formatted empty columns. Um, so the very first thing you'll have to do is, you know, completely delete all empty columns 
and empty rows. Um, so thankfully with the Spark data, we don't have to, to do that. So we can kind of like do a quick scan and see every column is spoken for. And we're not gonna do it for all 366,442 rows, but we're gonna assume that we're all good to go there. Um, the second thing we have to be aware of is um, are each columns, do they have headings? And do they have headings that make sense kind of in a vacuum? And what I mean by that is when you look at the heading of the column, do you know what is in that column? Um, this is sort of obvious in this example. Again, the Spark data is very well organized and structured. Um, but if you can think of something that you've downloaded from another um, program or from a uh, survey tool, sometimes this will just say Q1, Q2, Q3, um, and maybe a description under it, or maybe sometimes even the whole you know, question, which is uh, difficult to read. Um, and for reasons that'll become obvious in, in just a little bit, you don't want just the Q1, Q2, Q3 headings on your data when you're working with pivot tables. Um, you wanna be able to, to say, okay, I know what ethnicity is. I know what patient disposition is. Um, if you're not familiar with you know, CCSR codes or DRG codes, and you wanna make that more explicit um, when you're actually doing your analysis, you, know, you can just edit the column. Um, it has to be unique, um, so you can't kind of reuse uh, column names from, from other columns. Um, but that's something that you need to be uh, aware of before you sort of get into the nitty gritty of building a pivot table. Um, the other thing that you need to um, take into consideration, and Roxana will get to your question in um, just a second, um, is there needs to be something unique about each row. Um, so in sort of like database parlance, that would be called sort of like a primary key. Um, we'll call it, you know, a unique identifier. Um, so in a, in a patient kind of roster like this, a unique identifier would be something like your social security number. Um, but of course, we can't have identifying information in a data set like this. So there's not really a unique identifier in each of these rows that we can sort of reference later. So what we kind of have to do is make our own. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make a column. Um, I like to put it at the front, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna call it ID. And essentially what I'm gonna do is just make a unique identifier for each of these records. Um, so a little Excel shortcut here. Um, it's very good at pattern recognition. So if you start typing out something that you want to, to fill down, um, you just do a couple rows, double click on the bottom right, and it auto fills in sequential order based on the pattern all the way down to the bottom of the data set. So um, now each of these rows has a unique identifier associated with it that we'll reference at a later date. <clears throat> so now we're pretty much ready to, to start our, our analysis. So before we move over to that, though, I'm going to answer Roxanne's question. Um, you know, what if you have no input in a cell? Like for Paltrics, there is no answer. So individual cells can be blank. Um, that actually occurs here. You know, here we have um, three different types of payment that they, this data allows for, and there's not values for each of them. You know, birth weight's not always going to be... A, filled if there's not a birth as part of the, the discharge um, report. Um, so individual cells can be blank. And we'll show you how to deal with those um, if we want to you know, sort of get rid of them when we go back to uh, the pivot tables. So any other questions before we, we jump over? Cool. Um, so I will say that a lot of this are things, as I mentioned before, that you can do inside of this data set. Um, it's basically what pivot tables do is a combination of filtering, sorting, um, very basic um, math functions, a little bit of basic statistics, um, and a lot of sort of um, uh, kind of visual table building, uh, which you can do all of this here. The issue with doing it all here is that it requires you to interact with this potentially huge data set. And the larger the data is, kind of the less comfortable people tend to be with manipulating those data sets. Um, so, you know, you don't want to accidentally do something to, you know, a 350,000 line uh, 
spreadsheet that then requires you to have to undo a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, you may sort a column accidentally without sorting the rest of the spreadsheet and it can become a huge sort of fiasco. <laughs> so anything you can do without touching the data is, is preferred. And that's where pivot tables kind of like really shines. <clears throat> so let's jump into it. Um, the very first thing you're going to find uh, for like essentially you know, building your pivot table is in the insert ribbon. Um, the very first thing is pivot table, front and center, right on the left, uh, well, front and left, I guess, not front and center. Uh, the first thing that pops up. And the reason for this is they know how important and how popular this is. So we're going to put it right in the line of the, the insert ribbon. Um, I should also mention I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac, it may look a little different, um, but it's generally the, the same functionality. So we're going to put our cursor anywhere inside of our data. Uh, it doesn't have to be any specific place or any specific location. Um, we're going to click pivot table. Uh, it should auto select the range. So if you have continuous data across your columns and your rows, it's going to know to go from A1 all the way down to the, the last row and last column of the data. Um, you're almost always going to want to put this in new worksheets. Um, you could put it here if you wanted to, or in an existing worksheet that really makes things messy. Um, and data model is sort of a way to expand the functionality of pivot tables, which we're not going to get into um, in this, this talk. <clears throat> so we're going to add this to a new worksheet. It's essentially crunching the numbers, thinking about it. And then we get this interface that is probably very different than any other interface in Excel that you've ever seen. Um, we've got whatever this thing is over here, and we've got our fields over here. And if you look at this, what it means by fields are essentially columns. Um, and so this is why you want the column headings to be descriptive enough so that you know what they are while we're working with them. You know, if this was Q1, Q2, Q3, we would have no idea what we're actually looking at. And we'd have to toggle back and forth between our, our data and we don't want to do that. So you can always go back and, um, you know, edit this, edit columns. Um, it'll be reflected in here if you push refresh. It won't, it's, not a, it's not like a live refresh, but you have to kind of tell it to. Okay, so what does all this mean? Um, we've got these four boxes down here. Uh, we've got one that says filters, columns, rows, and values. And this kind of becomes apparent as we sort of step through it, but these are all things that you can do with these individual fields. Um, and we'll sort of give you an example of what we're talking about with each of these things. So the kind of first step in building a table is to kind of think about what you want that table to actually show. Um, so what I found is helpful for a lot of people who you know aren't super familiar with interacting with this kind of stuff is to just like make a, the table on the same spreadsheet just so you can kind of have an idea of what you want the the um, data to look like. So to use as an example, we'll start with let's say we just want a list of discharges by facility. Um, so we would kind of want the facilities to be in one. Uh, column, if I can spell facilities correctly. Um, and then we'll say like number of discharges. Yeah, and we'll say like, we want the hospitals listed here. And then these will be like, however many discharges are in the data set. Just to start off with like a really simple um, example here. So how we make this in pivot table form is just by uh, dragging and dropping the fields into these boxes. Um, so we say we want the each row to be a facility. So we just go to the pivot table fields, find the column or the field that has the facility names in it, and then we just drag it to rows. And now what this does is it just says, okay, these are all of the unique um, facility names in the facility name column. So fairly straightforward here. Um, a sort of unintended 
benefit of using pivot tables like this is that if there's a typo somewhere, uh, you can see it. So if like somebody made, you know, New York Presbyterian while without the hyphen between New York and Presbyterian, um, obviously that's probably not correct anyway, because the New York is not together. <laughs> um, but you can actually see, okay, there's a typo here and then go back into the data and, and correct it. <clears throat> so that is our rows. And then what we want in our um, uh, sort of like our values here, what we're actually looking to, to calculate is the number of discharges. And that is where having this unique identifier comes into play. Because um, what's going to happen is we're going to say, basically add one every time a record has Bellevue, Bellevue Hospital in the facility, or add one whenever each of these is available. Um, so, or, you know, count one. We're going to take our ID, which is our unique identifier, and drag it to values. What it does automatically, by default, pretty much across the board, is that it, is, it just adds all of them together. And so what this is doing is it's adding all of these numbers. So for Bellevue, it's saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, which is not what we want. Um, we want to count each of those. So we can change the field to count. And then what this is telling us is 26,510 at Bellevue, um, you know, 972 at the, the Koch Center, and then you know, 42,000 at uh, NYP Weil. Um, and if you ever want to sort of like double check yourself, it gives you a grand total tally, 366442, which is how many records we have. Um, so you know that it's sort of like adding it correctly and that nothing is, is really getting, getting lost in the shuffle there. Um, if we wanted to then sort this by any particular sort of metric, um, it's done similar to how you filter and sort in kind of base Excel. Um, we have a little drop down here. Um, we can sort this column A to Z. I always go to more sort. And then it lets us sort, we'll say descending by count. So now we have, you know, highest volume to lowest volume um, for each individual hospital that we have. Um, and that is the really, really quick way to set up like a really basic table. Um, so before we move on, does anyone have any kind of questions about that? Awesome. So we'll keep moving on. Um, what we can do now is we can just sort of like add to this. Um, we can take this as a base and then we can just build more things out. Um, so what if we were also interested in the total charges at each of these hospitals? Um, so that is a column that exists for us. Um, we want to add another value for that. So we just go total charges. Let me drag it. And then this sum is actually what we want in this case, because we want to add all of these up. Um, so we can say like, you know, who's charging <laughs> the most um, out of all of these hospitals. And so then if we wanted to sort this, we do the same thing. Uh, we go sort, more sort, and then we want to do sum of total charges this time. Yeah, so NYU is at the top and uh, you know, I, Eye and ear infirmary is at the bottom. Um, again, we can do another kind of math function by again, making another thing here. And then let's say we want the biggest average um, for each of these fields. We go to field settings, you can change average. Um, you can also do standard deviation and variance. Um, that's sort of the extent of the like stats breakdown. Uh, but you can see that that would be really helpful, you know, in making like a table one, uh, you know, for a publication, a public health or, or a survey or something like that, where you're setting up your demographics or doing like a cross tab, um, really helpful to, to do that using uh, pivot tables if you can. So we have another um, set of values here, average, you know, and we'll sort again, descending average. 
and then you can just sort of toggle back and forth between all these different sorts um, if you if you wanted to. Um, you know, something that might happen whenever you're doing this is you know you'll see something that's kind of you know interesting. So I've never heard of the Henry J. Carter Specialty Hospital, but on average they're charging the most. Um, so if I wanted to like drill down and see like what's actually going on here, um, if you double click on the um, the value square, the value cell, it opens up a new sheet that is essentially an applied filter to your data. Um, so this is every record that has um, Henry J. Carter as the facility name. And you can do like kind of a deep dive and see, okay, like what are they doing at this place? Um, what's interesting about it? Why is it sort of like, you know, jumping out? Um, you know, why is it so expensive, blah, 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 whatever you kind of wanted to do. Um, and again, this is just a filter. This could be done in the main spreadsheet, but because it's separate, you don't have to worry about messing anything up. Um, and then when you're done, you can just delete it, um, knowing that you can just come back and access it again. Um, you know, somebody gave some um, context in the chat. So thank you um, very much for that. But yeah, so if you if you look at the, the charges, you can kind of see it's all respiratory failure and ventilation and um, stuff like that. <clears throat> and length of stay, you know, on the long side. So kind of just a cool way to, to sort of really quickly dive in and maybe look at trends, see what's happening. Um, and it can get some like basic sort of demographic, demographic breakdowns um, and, and things like that. Um, but that is the, uh, the values and the rows. Um, what I didn't show, which I sometimes do accidentally, is another benefit of using pivot tables is that if you mess something up and you put something in the wrong box, um, let's say we're going to like pop this here. Oops. And this happens. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what I just did. This is the disaster. All you have to do is just drag it back out of the box. And it essentially undoes everything that you did. Um, you can also just uncheck um, boxes. Uncheck. It's like, oh, I actually wanted that back in, so let me put it back in. Um, it doesn't remember your sorting, um, so you have to sort of rebuild that if you want. Uh, but it's just incredibly easy to undo any sort of crazy stuff that might that might happen. <clears throat> okay, so that's values, that's rows. Um, we're going to go to columns next. Um, so you might think that, you know, and some confusion arises that since we're adding a column with the values that you know your count would go in the columns field, uh, that's just something you're going to kind of get used to. But what the columns actually is for is for breaking this up. So if we wanted to break this out by, um, we'll say gender, it adds row breakdowns for each particular gender in the same way that um, rows does for the rows. Um, so you see the total number hasn't changed, but we've added um, you know, female, male, uh, whatever the U stands for in this particular case, breakdown for each of these hospitals. Um, we can do the same thing for um, you know, race if we wanted to. Uh, and you'll see it starts getting a little hard to read and a little complicated. Um, but depending on your sort of level of uh, you know, ability to, to parse this information out, you can really just keep drilling down until you, you get really, really granular. Um, obviously that makes it more complicated, um, but that's just something that you can, you can do kind of however far you wanna go. Um, let's say we still wanna capture this information, but we don't like this layout. What you can do is you can basically try the same thing by having nested rows. Um, so this is a little bit easier to read. And it's the same information. Um, so we have Bellevue broken down by race and gender, um, and it's counting each of these records. Uh, so again, if we wanted to not look at count or like discharges, but we wanted to look at average length of stay, we can just get rid of count of ID, drag in length of stay, change it to average. Yeah, and then we get a bunch of decimal places that we can change up here if we wanted to. 
they can see you can really you're sort of like the limit is your own like comfort and dealing with these types of um, views uh, you know at a certain point it just gets too messy and you can't really um, you know understand what you're looking at so it's basically just finding a sweet spot for what you want to see and how you want to break stuff down and because it's all drag and drop that becomes really easy to do so you know it's called a pivot table because you're essentially pivoting between the axes if you want to say i want to look at this um, as a column in a row you can just swap these back and forth and see you know what's a better like view for what you're looking at um, any question about the the columns category that's the box that probably is the most confusing for people um, just because they're so used to seeing the values appear in the columns so it's it's a little confusing, noted. <clears throat> cool. Um, so the last thing we'll do is focus on the filters. Um, so you see right now we sort of have all of the facilities, um, but let's get rid of the facilities as a entire row. So now we just kind of have um, race, let's throw age group in there as well. Um, so this is every hospital that we've been looking at. Um, so what if we wanted to look at only um, while, only NYP while? So we would do that with a filter, um, and then we can pull the facility name down to the filters box. And then we have a drop-down filter that appears at the top. So we can say... I just want NYP while, or we can select all of NYP. And it's just a nice way to just kind of toggle, uh, you know, filter uh, settings across multiple fields. Um, so it's a really nice way to just sort of say like, hey, this is exactly what I want. Um, you know, or if we wanted to bring facilities back, whoops, bring facilities back in, Let me reset my filter and say we only want to like, you know, look at a particular age group. So we don't want to look at, you know, children, for instance. We'll do select multiple items, uncheck zero to 17 and get values for that across the entire database. Any questions about that stuff? That is awesome. Um, so that is usually where I sort of end the kind of intro to um, pivot tables, kind of like demo. Uh, and the reason because it is, OK, group by feature. Awesome. Thank you. So what's a good way to do the group by feature? All right, so one of the things you can do at pivot tables is you can kind of create your own groups. So here there's an age group that's already defined in the um, spreadsheet. Because again, because it's, uh, um, because it is uh, de-identified, there's ranges. So let's take a field like um, charges. That's, that's like a linear field. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this stuff. Um, let's say we want to group the charges in like groups of $10,000. Um, so I'm going to say, let's do total charges as the rows. And this might take a while. Okay. <laughs> Cause what it's doing is it's looking for each unique record inside of each row. Uh, and I'm going to count each of those. It should be one for everyone. Yes. So, oh, there's a couple that have the same charge, which is interesting. I guess if they're getting the same, really done. So now what we could do is we can then group some of this stuff together. <clears throat> and we get to decide what we want the limits to be. So under pivot table analyze, um, if you select group selection, 
let's start at zero and we'll end at whatever the longest one is. And then it's automatically decided to do it at, what is that, 1 million? So every million dollars, <laughs> every million dollar charge, it's doing a, um, let me just get this out because it's annoying me. <clears throat> it's counting each of these records. So there are you know, 363,996 records where the charge was between zero and a million. And then, you know, as you would expect, it gets lower the, the higher that we get. Um, so if there's a breakdown that isn't already included in your spreadsheet, that's something that you can apply yourself using the pivot table analyze group selection filter. Um, so what you'll see a lot of times is, you know, they probably did something similar to this when they made this data set and de-identified it. Um, so if this was just, you know, 89, 16, um, you know, 55, um, and they need to group those together, that's something that could be done with a pivot table relatively easily. Um, does that answer your question, hopefully? And this one's actually a bad example to do that because there's not a lot of of uh, fields that that would be like a good example for, but that's something that uh, we could do with the total charges there. Awesome. Um, so I did mention I was going to say how to how to deal with um, uh, blank cells. So we'll say if we wanted to just look at um, you know birth weights uh, by facility. Let's get rid of all of this stuff and just start from scratch. So facility name, rows, birth weights. And so we don't really care necessarily at facilities that don't have, you know, birth weight information. Um, we can do go into filter. Oh, my mouse is freaking out. Sorry, let me plug back in real quick. Cool. So we can either just take them out um, here. Like we can just say, oh, David Kosh doesn't have it, which is kind of like the annoying way to do it. Um, or we can also do it as a filter and say, uncheck blank. And now the blanks get removed. And it doesn't affect the data. It just affects our view of the kind of like little table that we've built up here. Um, so you can do that with any of the tables that have um, blanks or any of the fields that have blanks in them. Um, it's not going to affect the calculations or the math at all. Um, Excel follows their same rules for that. Um, but uh, it just kind of cleans up the view if that's something that you're not necessarily um, you know, interested in or want to see. Um, so either doing it in the filter and taking out anything that's blank or doing it line by line here for all the blank columns. <clears throat> Any other questions? Hey, Drew, I got a question to yeah. my inbox. Um, somebody is trying to work with the data and create their own pivot tables, but is wondering why their pivot table fields column keeps disappearing after they select the first column. Is that like a common thing that happens or any ideas why that might be happening? So is it something like what's happening here where if when I click out of it, it disappears? Um, if that is what is happening, um, you have yes, to sort that of- is, Yes, that is, okay. that is what's happening. Cool. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I, I sort of just glossed over that. Um, but yeah, so in order to get these fields to kind of appear by default, you have to kind of select inside the, um, inside the kind of pivot table field. So this isn't like a, like a, a cell that exists in normal like Excel space. This is sort of like a weird little macro that, that is its own thing. Um, so anytime you click inside of it, it calls the pivot table fields up. And whenever you click outside of it, uh, now Excel's like, okay, you're not interested in working on this pivot table anymore. You just want to like use regular cells, um, you know, which is uh, you know not exactly what we what we want to do. <clears throat> um, and I just kind of messed that up <laughs> on accident. Earthweight. 
Um, there's somebody asking if there are any questions, uh, issues with Excel for the web versus Excel for the desktop applications. Um, differences that you have are aware of that people should be mindful of. I haven't had so the the current version of the Excel um, web version, like the O365 that we all have access to now uses pivot tables pretty well. Um, you know, that wasn't always the case. Even a couple of years ago, anytime I would want to do something in the web version, I would usually pull it out and just work on it on my desktop. Um, but for most of the cases, um, for most of the cases that you're going to be using it, you know, basic functionality, the web version appears to work fine. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. Where you're going to have issues is if, um, and we're not really talking about uh, creating data models and you know mimicking database structure and pulling pivot tables across multiple worksheets and stuff like that, which are all things you can do. Um, that doesn't really work in the web version of Excel. Um, it's It's very... Um, flimsy. <laughs> so it might work once, but when you go back to it, it won't work again. Uh, but just building a, a pivot table within the same worksheet, um, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, I have a couple set up that I check fairly regularly and haven't had any issues with it. And then there's a question I skipped over. Um, is it possible to have the pivot table calculate the percentage of each type of admission to the total by facility? No. So what would be nice <laughs> is if you could <laughs> sort of like make a um, make like a, your own kind of calculation within like if you could have a field where you set the the rules of the calculation um, that is something that you can actually do um, they call it automate now it used to be called power pivot um, and they've called it a couple things um, in the past, but that's sort of like an extension of what you can do inside of pivot tables, but it's not part of the uh, part of the the default. Um, what the easiest thing to do when you come across stuff like that, and it's something that you want to do, um, and we'll just do we'll do the base facility. Yeah, I really messed this up. I need to change it. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that ID. <clears throat> is if you wanted to do a percentage to just, you know, kind of manually do a formula outside of it. Yeah, so I guess I should do it by 100. You know, then you can do the same kind of drag and drop that you would normally with other, whoops, nope, didn't work. Oh, because it's quoted. Uh, there's probably a way to do that. That's not annoying, but the really not annoying way. But when you do it this way, obviously you're not getting a live feed. So if you change the sort, it's going to kind of mess all the mess a lot of the tables up, things like that. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in doing sort of an extension of that, um, look into um, Power Pivot, which is an add-on, or Power Automate, or inside of the Automate um, kind of like field, which is sort of their new macro stuff, but it's not out of the box. Oh, it is possible to calculate percentage. There you go. I'll have to play around with that. Thank you, Arena. <laughs> I've never done that. I usually just pull it out and do it and do it by hand. Um, so for next time, I will check that out for sure. Show values as calculation grand total. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. We're always learning, learning together. So yeah, you can right click show values as, and then you have a bunch of options here. Um, depending on what you're clicking on. Thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah, there's a question. Um, I see how you request a sum or a count. How do you request that Excel count only unique values? 
So whatever you do the count, that is essentially the unspoken rule of that is that it's only counting unique values. Um, you know, so let's kind of like do that and we'll do count again. So if we were using a um, something that wasn't a unique identifier, it would only count the unique identifier. So if there were a couple of Bellevue Hospital people that had the same ID, it would this number would decrease by a couple. Um, so that's kind of how that's set up to to do that. Um, I'm sort of assuming operating assumption here that you're going to want to always count by unique identifier, but if not, um, you know you don't you don't have to to do that. Uh, you can allow that to to count duplicates if you want. But yeah, the count of ID is almost always going to be unique identifiers. Um, another question, how do you add a formula to add two column totals or amounts to a new column? So is that um, inside of the, the pivot table or just sort of Excel in general? Uh, Edwin, if you want to clarify, uh, put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. I can take you off the mic. So usually what I would do is I would just create a new column. Uh, because that may be something that there's probably a better way to do that. But say if we wanted to, again, there's not really a good example here. Uh, we'll just say we wanted to add these two columns together. Play example. <clears throat> so we've done that. And then we'll pop over here. And because we've added a new column, we're going to want to add, uh, just make sure that our data has been updated correctly. Um, and because I added it at the end, it's probably not there. So that's AI. So we just want to make sure we're including AI here. Okay. Now we have it as an example. So we would just include it. Whoops. Include it as another column. Um, that way you can do sort of like multiple um, calculations without having to really like muddy up the, the pivot table all that much. You'll just be doing that directly in the data itself. Uh, which is a lot cleaner for me. Um, and it allows you to, to sort of do things in bulk, which which makes more sense. We, I'll take one last question from the chat since we're about at time. Um, we saw pivot the pivot table showing things like averages, but can the pivot table do medians? Uh, I don't think, I think all it does base is average. So yeah, let's see what we get more options. Oh, it's just the same thing. So yeah, just averages. Medians would be another, that would be an Excel formula that you could apply. But yeah, as far as I know, that's not a, a pivot table function. Awesome, Drew, thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanna add before we wrap up? Uh, No, I don't awesome. think so. Okay, well. Oh, yeah, thank thanks for the questions. And thanks for the yes. tip. <laughs> Always nice. We got all the questions. Um, lots of thank yous in the chat. Just for anybody who logged in late, I have recorded the session and you will get a copy of the recording in an email at the end of today. I'll also include um, the links to the files that Drew um, provided at the beginning of the session. And I'll throw in some links to um, some guides from Microsoft about pivot tables, as well as some of the courses we have on LinkedIn Learning and Skillsoft that you may find helpful to look at at a later date and just become more proficient with pivot tables. So without further ado, Drew, thank you so much for doing this session. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. And if you haven't had the chance yet, please go vote um, today and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.